Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Makes on the broadcast today. Tyler Klimas joins us. He's with Leaf Street Strategies. We're talking marijuana for the whole show on an all new Nevada News. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. When Roe vs. Wade was overturned, I couldn't believe it. 50 years of progress gone in an instant. Now I hear Sam Brown was chairman of a group that fought to ban abortion with no exceptions, even for rape or incest. And not only that, Sam Brown tried to hide it now that he's running for Senate, leaving it off his official campaign documents so we wouldn't find out. It's no surprise that Sam Brown wants to hide his extreme views, but we know he's not for us. Win Senate is responsible for the content of this ad. They want us to believe we only have two options. That's just not working anymore. I've never been a follower. I'm a businessman and entrepreneur. I'm ready to forge a new path to secure our future. One that keeps Northern Nevada free, fair, and wild. A path that means freedom for all, including affordable housing. I'm Greg Kidd, and I approve this message because I'm not from either political party. I'm for Nevada. Story County is leading Nevada. Home of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Google, Tesla, Panasonic, and other world-leading companies. Story County provides thousands of tech, advanced manufacturing, and logistics careers for Nevadans. We're diversifying and driving Nevada's economy and generating millions in tax revenue and billions in economic activity across Northern Nevada. Story County is leading Nevada's future. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers Broadcast Headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're delighted to welcome to the program Tyler Klimas. He is with Leaf Street Strategies, former Governor Sandoval's press secretary. Pleasure to have you on the program, sir. Thanks, Sam. Great to be here. All right, so you wrote this fabulous article that I read. Explain to the public what this article was about. So the article is just kind of contemplating now with some of the recent developments at the federal level and particularly with the rescheduling efforts that are happening. You know, for? For cannabis. Cannabis okay. right now is, is scheduled uh, as a Schedule One narcotic. That's the highest level. Which is insane, which, which matches it with heroin. Ecstasy, peyote, and that means you know, there's high abuse potential and there's absolutely no medical benefits or medical use, which at this point we know not to be true. No, it's ridiculous. And so now we're starting that process. President Biden started it in 2022. He asked his Health and Human Services Department to review the scheduling of, of marijuana. They consulted with the FDA, and in 2023, they recommended that cannabis be moved to Schedule 3. Uh, they recommended that to the DEA and thus started the process. Okay, and what does that mean? So what that means is uh, they've recommended to the Drug Enforcement Agency, part of the Justice Department, that we've looked at the science, we feel like there's medical benefit, there's lower abuse potential, and we feel like we should move cannabis from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3 in the Controlled Substances Act. Pretty unprecedented, but obviously a long time coming. And so at that point, the Justice Department uh, recently moved to uh, propose a new rule to reschedule that. And that's where we currently sit. Um, by law, it's a 60-day comment period. Um, I think by the time this airs, uh, there will be three or four more days. So Monday, July 22nd is the last day to submit comments. Uh, the DEA then reviews those comments, responds, maybe asks for more follow-up. Maybe there's some administrative appeals, but ultimately um, they're going to come out with, with their opinion. They are the authority on that. Um, and we expect it hopefully sometime before November, and then, you know, there may be challenges. But again, this is unprecedented for cannabis. This is a big step forward and really a, a recognition now that the federal government is going to come in line with the policy of the states um, who have been doing the lion's share of the work in regulated cannabis marketplaces to date. And this is going back almost 70 years. That's I mean, this goes back 
uh, to the Nixon administration That's right. and things that were done for political reasons, yes. not for medical reasons, because at, at certain points, marijuana was legal. That's right. So this is, I, I remember when I first came to the United States, which was uh, 1974, and I worked as the world's worst gopher on a construction crew. And there was the nicest carpenter working on that crew and a real artisan who had just spent two years in prison for being caught with one joint. That's right. I mean, that's just stunning that that's where we were and absolutely for no reason. That's right. I and mean, in the Controlled Substance Act and the, and, and, and the penalty codes, I mean, uh, the same amount of cocaine as you had of marijuana, right, puts you behind bars for the same amount of, of years. And so, yeah, I mean, the whole so social justice part of, of cannabis legalization, uh, I mean, uh, is, is a segment in itself, right, and, 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 and a wonderful component that's coming out of this. But um, the damage that has been done, the long time coming, um, part of this is, 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 is significant. Oh, and especially to minorities, which is whom it was aimed at right. back during that administration. Yeah, it was the, it was the war on drugs, right? And, and, and you're right, it was, it was extremely political and then it was left, you know, untouched. And, it, you know, we, we, we have strong states, um, right, in federalism and, and the states got up and, and, and they made the first move. Right, they, uh, they recognize the medical benefits in California, right? Cancer patients, aid patients in the 90s were using cannabis, but it was still federally illegal and they risked those same penalties um, and time behind bars. And so uh, we're gonna look back uh, at this and it's gonna be pretty remarkable how states took this policy uh, and moved with it absent any kind of federal support and in the face of, of federal designations that said what they were doing uh, was not allowed and that they couldn't. Um, but we did it anyway, and you know Nevada was, I think, in the tranche of the, you know the second wave of legalization. They were the uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh, eighth state to legalize it for adult use. But now we have 24, and you know adult use marketplaces, 36 to 40 medical marketplaces, and so the snowball has been rolling. And this rescheduling effort is just kind of uh, 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 signaling that uh, the highest levels of the federal government now recognize what we all know. Um, and then hopefully, you know, with some, some federal legislation that's in the works, uh, that we, we kind of put this issue to bed and be able to move forward. Okay, so I like to bring this up a lot now because there's so much talk about democracy and, and that we're losing our democracy, and I think that's ridiculous. Every time somebody goes and votes, that's a part of democracy. Every time somebody goes to a town hall or a debate, that's, to me, democracy in action. And, and what's happening with marijuana is also, to me, democracy in action Absolutely. because the states have passed this um, and, you know, it's forcing the federal government to respond and that's a wonderful thing. Um, and the other part of it is, which is the irony, is that the people who are in power now, who were kids doing marijuana back in their teenage years, are now in their 60s and 70s and they're the people that vote and they're the people telling their legislators, hey, it wasn't bad back then, and oh, my aches and pains, you know, or getting to sleep, whatever it might be, going much better with a little marijuana. They're coming back. To it. <laughs> I mean, the demic. I mean, it's it's not you know, it's not opinion, right? There's data, uh, and it shows that all age groups and all demographics uh, are consuming cannabis now that it's becoming more normalized and the access is easier. And I think that's a key that we'll probably touch on later is is access, but it's there, and they're coming back in droves. And back to your point on democracy. Uh, that's exactly right. And Nevada was, was in a similar situation in 2016 with the ballot initiative uh, in that there are governors out there that don't necessarily, you know, they're not proponents of, of cannabis, um, but they're also not going get to get in the way of the will of the people. And that's what our not government Not if they want to get reelected. Exactly. <laughs> but, but, you know, I mean, these are ballot initiatives that are passing with, you know, 56, 57 percent uh, majority vote, and, and that means, you know, as, as a government and as elected officials, you know, that's your job to, to, to proceed with that, and we've seen it, and, you know, it's a great example. All right. Um, one of the interesting things to me um, was that the illegal market has remained so strong, the black market, and I, I guess one of those reasons would be the fact that, uh, you know, with all the taxes that are on marijuana, uh, that the cost of legal marijuana versus illegal marijuana is a big difference. 
the thing that surprised me and in a way shocked me was when they were le legitimizing it in Nevada, all the bad things, herbicides and Lord knows what else, that were putting, being put on marijuana in the black market that were now being looked for in the legal market to make sure they weren't going in. And I'm thinking, boy, a lot of people have got to be concerned about what they were doing a few years ago. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly right. And the illicit market, uh, it's, uh, it's there. And, you know, we have to focus going forward, and, and this is at a national level, but down to the state levels like Nevada, we have to focus on value and access. Because I think illicit market is the greatest threat to these legal state marketplaces, especially absent any kind of federal action. So it's about value and access. The product has to provide a value to you or you feel like buying from the regulated marketplace is a value as opposed to getting it potentially cheaper from the illicit market because it Well, I was just, I was just going to jump in and say that the example that was given to me a few years ago was that if you were buying vodka, you're gonna, not going to buy Charlie's Vodka from the guy down the street right. versus going into a liquor store and buying you know whatever brand you like to buy. And so you were going to get to that point with marijuana where there was going to be a certain segment that would buy the cheapest whatever, but for the most part, people are gonna, and, and there's gonna be competition within that marketplace anyway. There is, but I, I don't think we can wait around for that to happen. So I think state governments, legislatures, and they've got to look at things like the tax rate. Uh, those early initiatives, similar to Nevada, it was about you know tax the heck out of it, right? And uh, we're gonna bring in revenue, and these cannabis establishments are gonna print money. And that may be it at the beginning, right? But now we're not there, so we have to look at uh, you know, constantly look at our regulations and our regulatory frameworks, make sure they're not overly onerous, and that should just be a good government exercise in general, but also look at the tax rates because, uh, you know, these products have to come in line with their competitors, and if their competitors are the illicit market that don't have to test products, they don't have to pay uh, the compliance costs, um, people are going to, I mean, they, they go where their wallet, right, like where their wallet goes. I mean, like, price is still the, the biggest contributing factor to, to, to purchase. All right, but the other part of it is that you have to have companies uh, thinking outside the box. And I'll give the example uh, of Planet 13. We've done a couple of shows down there. Um, and they're not just selling marijuana. They've got restaurants, they've got nightclubs, they've got all kinds of things. You can buy t-shirts. I mean, you can go down there with a family and have an experience and the people who are old enough can go in and, and purchase the marijuana or whatever other medications they want to buy in that place. But it's clean, it's bright, it's family right. friendly. Right. I mean, I, I think that there has to be an expansion of, of just the idea that if you're just doing marijuana, then, then you've got a bigger issues with you know, the price balance. But if you're doing such a bigger thing, then you know, you're going there for lunch, then you're going there for entertainment. Then, so I think that the shopping experience is different in a place like that. Absolutely. And, and, and I'm not being paid to say that about no, 13. No, certainly, and you're absolutely right, and you're gonna have to be creative. And, and listen, the industry, including the number of participants in this industry, is gonna look very different in 10 years than it, than it, than it looks now. And consumption lounges, I think, was a, uh, a good decision to allow some diversification. Okay, let's, okay, we gotta talk about this. Okay, <laughs> this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard, is that we legalize marijuana, but you got nowhere to smoke it if, right. if it's not in your house. Right. And we have how many million tourists coming here a right. year? Right. And there are all these marijuana places that are specifically aimed at tourists, and it's so stupid. We gotta fix this. Um, so consumption lounges are a good beginning, but I mean, there, there needs to be more. And I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, a hotel has to allow marijuana to be smoked in every room, but it can be like regular smoking where you have a designated floor, designated area, but we got to get there at some point. And, and obviously, now you can explain why casinos can't do it at this moment. Right. Well, I mean, it's already happening. I mean, I think that's the biggest. Well, point yeah, here. but I mean, but that, yeah, but that's under the table. I mean, legally, the casinos cannot allow marijuana to be smoked. Right. On they premises. are prohibited by by gaming policy from doing that. But it is happening. Right. And I think, of course, it is. <laughs> and, and you know what we risk is because it's it's being throttled at that point. And again, I'm not saying the original concerns weren't justified. Right. Again especially considering what? gaming's past, right? And, and those were real concerns, but those concerns were like, you know, six years ago at this point. I mean, so much happens. The cannabis industry moves at a lightning pace, but the fact is that the consumption is already happening in the casinos, right? It's, it's, it's already there. And what you risk is 
um, because it's under the table, as you said, that product may be illicit product because those tourists and travelers may not know. They may get cannabis delivered to their hotel room, which is prohibited for a regulated cannabis business. And so what we risk is adverse reactions or worse, and that's on a gaming property. So despite the tax revenue and the retail revenue that a casino could potentially uh, get from, 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 from selling cannabis products, and by the way, it's not just joints. They can do edibles. They can do beverages, which is a fascinating market segment. So Food, we're, yeah. we're not talking about smoke throughout the casino. Um, but, I mean, the opportunity is here, and, you know, it's a, it's a health and safety issue um, on the illicit market side uh, that this product, uh, you know, is, is, is not being facilitated uh, at the place of, of, of consumption. And so I think those are, are considerations that should be taken um, when we're looking at, at the global policy. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back much more. I, I don't know why I'm so excited about this. I don't do this stuff. I mean, you know, that's a long, long, long time ago. Uh, we'll be back with more on marijuana after this time out. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Early in the morning or throughout the night, Professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you. Safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators. From the exotic to the everyday. Trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over one in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Tyler Klimas. He is with Leaf Street Strategies, former uh, press secretary to Governor Sandoval. So I, I want to bring up an example of what has got to be driving the gaming industry crazy in the state, is if you go back a couple of decades to men's clubs, when they started in Nevada in a big way, it was, th according to the printed press, a $30 million industry that was being taken away from the casinos because they weren't able to do lap dances and all that kind of thing. And people were going out of the casinos to go to these men's clubs, which are still very successful in Las Vegas. Um, and I'm sure they've looked at marijuana thinking the same thing, which is if we could have this in-house instead of down the street, we'd be making a lot more money. I mean, it's possible. I, I mean, I think that's those are great questions to ask some of the, the big resorts. <laughs> to ask <because>, somebody else. <laughs> because I think, you know, you know, I, I, I just think that that if 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 they did want that, we could be proceeding down that. And, and we look, we, we very OK. No, can I, can we, I quote we, you, Mary yeah, Lau sure. from the Retail Association yes. of Nevada? She said on this program, so I'm not telling tales out of school. She said that as soon as they legalize marijuana for casinos, the casinos are going to build the most incredible buffet right outside the area where you smoke marijuana, and they're going to be charging $100 a plate to be in that buffet. You know what, and that's very, you know, that may be possible, or, or that may be right, but honestly, I think sometimes we're, we're, we're guilty here of like overcomplicating the matter. Um, because if, 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 if you go down a thought exercise here at a day club, at a pool, there's no reason that one can't order 
you know, uh, a, a beer or a cocktail or a THC cannabis infused low dose beverage. That product category exists. It's being used everywhere. We're seeing the younger generations not consume alcohol. Right. That, that's actually a fascinating statistic Absolutely. that not just the younger generation, but it's going across a lot of age brackets where more and more people are ordering non-alcoholic beverages when they go out than alcoholic beverages. Yeah. I mean, look at the popularity of dry January, um, you know, over the last five years, you know, Certainly me, I remember one or two non-alcoholic beer brands growing up. Now every single brand seems to have its non-alcoholic offering and you see the prevalence of, of mocktails, et cetera. And so when you look at a city like Las Vegas and the hospitality sector, when our job is to cater to these, these travelers and tourists, um, you know, the non-drinkers, and if that population is growing, they still wanna enjoy an intoxicant, they still wanna have uh, an adult substance to have a good time and one that's, you know, potentially regulated and safe. And again, low dose THC beverage. So again, is it a, you know, is it going to bring in, you know, billions and billions of dollars? No, I think we should be realistic. I mean, marijuana is potentially a $50 billion retail uh, industry globally, right? Uh, alcohol, 1.5 trillion, right? And so th that's what we're talking about here. However, just normalizing it, watching what's happening at the federal government and saying we can either be ahead or first to market or we can be behind but it's inevitable so let's take the opportunity right now nevada's a steady regulated marketplace um, we don't have a lot of issues or concerns going on now may be that time to have those conversations all right let's take a break and we'll be right back what do you count on you count on your power every day at nb energy we've always powered what's important to you but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Calamity. It lurks around every corner. Or not. That's why UMC Quick Care is around every corner with locations around the valley. UMC Quick Care for all your small calamities. Fantastic cocktails and delicious food. It's a good time to eat. Over 500 hot slots plus electronic table games. It's a good time to play. Player rewards and big time jackpots. It's a good time to win. Ooh, you get times a train wreck. Carson Valley Inn. Hate your place for the good times. Carson Valley Inn. Welcome to the Winnemucca Big R. Hi, I'm John Walker. Welcome to Big R Love Lock. Hi, I'm Rich Martin. Welcome to Fallon Big R. My name is Braden. Welcome to Big R Friendly. Hi, I'm Kelly. Welcome to Big R Sparks. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Tyler Klimas. He is with Leaf Street Strategies, former press secretary to Governor Sandoval. You know, one of the things that surprised me was when marijuana was essentially legalized in Nevada, that first of all, the police accepted it immediately. It was like, great, one more thing we don't have to worry about. But the other thing was, I expected to be on the freeway and going along at the speed limit and seeing people driving at 20 miles an hour. And that didn't happen. And we have not had any kind of pushback from law enforcement across the state saying, hey, you really opened up a can of worms here. Yeah, I, and I think, I think that's, that's true. And we've seen that in other markets as well. The sky doesn't fall um, when we start moving forward with legalized cannabis marketplaces. But that's not, not from effort of stakeholders. It's not, you know, it's from communication with law enforcement, which I know you know, when I led the, the Cannabis Regulatory Agency, I mean, that was a top priority, and I know it still is, is to have those relationships with law enforcement, make sure when they pick up the phone, if they see something, somebody answers that, 
call, and I, I think Nevada's done a good job, and we've, we've copied other models in other states that also have done a good job. And so I agree with you. I will say, and sometimes it's, it's not reported, you know, our local law enforcement still does a lot of heavy lifting on the illicit market side. Right. We, we, oh, yes. You know, we still have uh, residential houses that are, are purchased by foreign nationals and turned into grow operations, and they ship that product to California, which is a huge risk to the community. Again, back to trying to combat the illicit market, which is, which is extremely important. But um, I think it has allowed law enforcement to turn their attention to things that are greater risks to the community, like something like that operation happening within our, our, our communities and our residences, and not so much on, like you said, um, some of the thought behind what would actually happen if we, if we did legalize cannabis. Okay, so how long do you think before the federal government uh, drops this down to three. Oh God! If, if, well, oh, drops it down to three. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, so well, that because that's the, that's yeah, al almost listen, saying it's it's done. It was a priority of of the president, the current president. Obviously, there's a lot going on uh, with the presidential politics right now. I, I still think we're going to see a final proposed rule um, before November. Uh, I do expect it to be challenged by by those in opposition, and then. Uh, hopefully we'll see what happens shortly thereafter. Come back and uh, let's talk about this some more. Bye, this was fun. Soon. Pleasure to have you Thanks on. Thanks a lot. Thank you, and we'll be right back. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real. It's growing and it needs your help. Go online to carsoncitygreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the air conditioning back on today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why sweat for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your air conditioning fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suite. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day on various platforms, including television, radio, our website, audio and video podcasts, YouTube. If you want to find the show, you can find it pretty darn easily. And we cover politics, business, health, and education. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.